I mean, I ask them straight out. Um, I ask what quality of life means to you. And sometimes parents are like, I don't know. What do you mean? What does quality of life mean? And so how we sort of break that down is what, do you, what are some things that you want to make sure your child experiences or doesn't experience? And so a lot of times, especially as a child is declining, parents are like, I don't want them in the hospital anymore. I want to be home. Okay, that we can facilitate. And so sometimes I will say, that's definitely something we can do, but these, these are some of the things that we either need to reel back on or, or add in. And so sometimes that means going on to hospice. And with concurrent care, which is my new favorite thing. And so we can usually facilitate that goal without really rocking the boat that much. All that means is they get more support in the home. So adding, when a child accesses their hospice benefit, anything that was in their plan of care. So basically anything that was happening before, skilled nursing, seeing all these different specialists, having formula delivered, whatever it is, will stay in place. All that's added is more nursing support. I can only really see families every week-ish, every two weeks, every month with the way that we unfortunately are budgeted. And so with hospice, they can get every, they can get visits every day if they want and they get a whole team of nurses and it's 24 hour support. And so if your goal of care is to stay at home, sometimes that's how I will present it and I will say, I'm gonna say something and you're gonna reel back, but let me finish my sentence. And so when I say the word hospice, parents are like, ah, but then when I explain concurrent care and it's adding this and that's really the only thing it's taken away is that you're hauling us to the hospital every time we're in a crisis. They sort of, oh, okay. Let me think about this and talk about this with other family members or whoever it is they need to talk about. Um, a lot of times that conversation, the, the quality of life and what do we want for your child happens in the moment. And so if we see a child is heading towards a decline where their CO2 is too high and they may, it, may need a trach or they can't manage their secretions anymore, whether it's because of a crisis, an acute event or because of disease progression, I will have that conversation. Even if I don't think that's where we're headed tomorrow, that's something I'll bring up and be like, there is a high chance we could end up with a trach at some point. And I really want you to think about if that's something that you would want. And then that turns into the, well, what does a trach mean? I always thought trachs meant this because that's what I saw it in the other kid. Or what happens, what comes with a trach? And so that's when we, I'll pull up a picture of a trach on my iPad or if I have one, we have extras of everything. I hand them a trach. I'm like, this is what it'll look like. And it goes here and this is what it means. And it comes with suctioning and it comes with nebulizers and it comes with X, Y, and Z. And, it sort of, again, empowers the parent with knowledge to be like, oh, this is something that's within my goals of care or no, I don't want to do this. And if we don't do this, what's the option?